in this quick Photoshop tip, I'm going to show you a tool that actually, as a portrait photographer, probably most of us don't pay too much attention to. I'm Paul. This is Mastering Portrait Photography. Like so much of Photoshop, I think portrait photographers don't pay attention to the tools they don't think are necessarily that useful. And the pen tool, the subject of this particular video, I think is one of those tools. It's there, occasionally you might find a use for it, but in fact, it's far more useful than people give it credit for. And in this video, I'm gonna show you just one simple use, and that's to use it to get rid of objects using the spot healing brush. But firstly, a very quick overview of what does the pen tool do? So we go to an empty document, I pick up the pen tool, just a basic pen tool, I can click a series of points, and each time I click, it draws an interconnecting line between them. At the moment, I'm drawing each point as a hard angular change, but if I click and hold, then instead it will allow me to define curved points. And we can go into uh, the detail of the pen tool uh, in more detail in a different video. But the upshot of it is I can draw really accurate lines uh, that are defined by a series of points that I have the ability to place precisely where I want them. And if I go down to the uh, direct selection tool, I can click on any one of these points and then I can move it, which not only gives me the ability to be incredibly accurate, it gives me the ability to change my mind later. Now what I can do is I can tell Photoshop to stroke that path. Now what do I mean by that? Well, it's very simply, whatever tool I tell it to, so let's go to my brush tool, so I hit B, here's my brush, you can see it's a hard edge brush, and if I use my stylus, you can see if I apply no pressure, a lot of pressure, then it changes its thickness. Let's just get rid of each of those dots. Now if I go down, uh, sorry, let me just bring that back to the middle, now, if I go down to my Paths palette, now, if you haven't got your Paths palette available to you, go to Window and down to Paths. Okay, and there it is. Mine usually sits alongside my Layers and Channels dialogues. Uh, I can't even say it. My Layers and Channels palettes. Click on the Palette menu and go to Stroke Path. It'll throw a dialogue, and from here, I can choose what tool I'd like to uh, run along that path and whether or not I want to simulate pressure. So first off, let's do it just normally. Hit OK and it just draws along that path. Now that in itself is pretty useful if you need to draw lines like this. I'll undo that. We're going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to select my palette options, stroke path, but this time I'm going to select simulate pressure. And you can see now, if I click off the work path so you can see it more clearly, you can see that as it gets towards the ends of the path, as it's pretending that it's my hand drawing that path, uh, the pressure goes to zero and the line becomes incredibly thin. So that's just a very quick overview of what it allows you to do. It allows you to draw and define a really accurate line along which you can do things. It allows you also to use a path as a mask, but we'll deal with that in a different video. So let's go back to our original image. This is Evie. Now, Evie doesn't need any post-production work. I brought her up because she's wearing a big pair of hoop earrings, and it made a nice exercise to show you how it can be used, how this particular technique can be used. It's really effective with things like uh, jewellery. Necklaces are great. It's a, good, it's a very good technique for this. Uh, hoop earrings, stray hairs, and if you photograph dogs, it's quite useful for photoshopping out uh, a lead or a leash. Also, if you happen to do portraits outside and you get those really annoying telegraph lines or electricity lines against the sky in the background, this is good for those too because it allows me to define a path and then run the spot healing brush along it. So let's start with that first earring. Let me just check them on the right layer. Let's just zoom in. Uh, again, I'm going to go to my pen tool, but this time I'm going to use the curvature pen tool. And the curvature pen tool is exactly the same, except it assumes instead of um, when I touch down, instead of it assuming that every point is angular, this time it will assume every point is curved. And that's useful, of course, when I'm doing something like an earring here, where an earring, a hoop earring, when I view it from an angle, is an ellipse, which is perfect for this kind of process. So all I do is I've got my pen tool. I just click my way around the middle of the earring very carefully. Looking good, taking my time. 
Now, of course, there are a million ways of doing this. This is just one technique, which is useful in certain circumstances. But I found it to be one of the most reliable ways and repeatable ways of removing objects like this. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to select my spot healing brush. So go to my spot healing brush menu. And that allows me to have a look at the size of the brush as if it was going to be stroked along this path. All I do is I just I make it a little bit bigger. So it's bigger than the earring. That's about right, I think. Trial and error, not a problem. I'm going to go to my paths menu. So I make sure my uh, work path is selected just for make sure that it's using the right path. Go to the paths tool palette menu, the paths palette menu, uh, hit stroke path. I'm going to select the, uh, where are we? Healing, spot healing brush. And this time I'm going to make sure that the simulate pressure is turned off because I don't want the healing brush to be narrower or softer at the end. I want it to be consistent all the way along. Hit OK, click off the path so you can see it, and now you can see it's gone. Well, that in itself isn't that quick. It's a little bit clunky. So what if we can make it just that little bit more streamlined? So let's go across and have a look at her other earring, the right-hand earring as we're looking at it. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record an action to make it far more versatile and far quicker. And of course, every time I start at Photoshop, the action will be available to me. Available to me. And what I want it to do is every time I've selected a path, I want to hit a hotkey and then that will change. That will invoke the stroke path with the spot healing brush and do the work for me. OK, so first thing we need to do before we record an action is to make sure that I've defined a path because I don't want the action to record a new path every time. I want to define the path. And then I want the action to execute on that path. Whereas if I record a path as part of the action, every time I run it, it will have exactly the same path. Even if I'm working on the sky, it'll still Photoshop out an imaginary earring. So first things first, let's create that. So let's go to our paths menu, make sure I don't have any paths stored. So I'm just going to delete the old one. Hit P, which brings me into my uh, pen uh, tool. I'm going to just make sure I've got the curvature pen tool selected. I'm going to start here where it joins the ear, just a little bit beyond it. Oh, I've obviously, uh, let me get rid of that. I've, been, I've clearly touched down somewhere. Ah, oh, it's because the touch was <laughs> the touch was enabled uh, on my uh, tablet. I hate that. I can't find a way of it always turning off. Apologies for that. Uh, if anyone knows, by the way, how to make sure that's permanently turned off, I've set it everywhere I can find, and occasionally it just reinvokes it. Uh, so here we go. Just work our way around, nice and carefully. Remembering that it's good to be accurate, but the joy of this is I can always change it later. I can always manipulate the points. So I'm just being nice and slow. OK, so I've defined a path. Now we're going to create an action. So let's bring up our actions dialog. Uh, so mine's here on one of the toolbars. You can always just go to window actions and that will bring it up too. And we are going to go here and to ask it to create for us a new action. We're going to call it something that we'll remember, MPP Healing Brush Path <laughs> Demo, short and sweet name. I'm going to stick it in a folder called MPP Stuff, which is where I stick all sorts of things when I'm running these videos. Uh, first function key that's available, you can choose whatever function key you like. This is going to be Shift F4. So uh, I'm going to hit Record. While I'm doing that now, everything from now on is going to be recorded by this action, which is why I've already created the path. I'm going to go down to my uh, path palette tool <laughs> options, <laughs> the options menu on the path uh, palette, hit stroke path, spot healing brush, make sure simulate pressure is off, hit OK. OK, that's done it. No matter how successful this is or not, don't change your mind keep going because otherwise it will record you doing undos and changing things and that's not what you want what you want to happen here is for it to record the action and then if you need to change the path a little bit that's fine i'm going to click onto the work path and now i'm going to delete it and this is also being recorded as part of that action you can see here in the actions record menu it's added a new step now i'm going to stop the record so i've recorded an action that starts with stroke the work path, select the work path, delete the work path. So that every time I run it, whatever work path I've defined, it'll run the healing brush along it. It will then delete the work path. So I'm ready 
to start the next work path area just as it's done here you can see the earring has gone and now i'm in a position where i can uh, fix another bit of the image so let's say i want to go up here to this strand of hair okay so you can see this is just a strand of hair it's a little bit irritating so let's see if we can get rid of it again all i'm going to do is just work my way along it with the pen tool i'm just creating myself a new path that the action is going to work on more care you put into here generally speaking the better your result uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring up the healing brush tool the spot healing brush and you see it's really quite a big tool at the moment I've got quite a big brush head on it I'm just going to shrink that down because I don't need it to be that big for a thin hair like this and the smaller I can get the brush the better as long as it overlaps the edges of what I'm trying to uh, remove then it, I'll get a better result then I'm going to do is hit the shortcut key, the shortcut key rather that I have just defined, which is Shift and F4. There you go, it's done. Oh, I left a nice bit there. Again, bring up the pen. Do it a little bit quicker this time. Shift F4. Another hair here. Shift F4. Don't like that curly one here. Of course, I'm showing you how to retouch something that didn't need retouching. I just thought it was an interesting exercise in uh, the healing brush tool. One last one. Let's remove this circular loop here. Again, remember that I am on the curvature pen tool. So every point is a curve. Shift F4 and that's gone. You can see how easy it is and how quick it is. Um, and more importantly, I found it to be a very reliable and very consistent way of photoshopping out things like earrings, necklaces, stray hairs, telegraph cables and the odd dog leash. Whereas just plowing in with the spot healing uh, tool or the stamp tool, they are great. I mean, I use those all of the time. This is a very specific purpose, but it's an incredibly useful purpose. And in another video, I'll show you how to use the path tool to create really cool masks when you're changing clothing or you're doing retouching of backgrounds. I hope that was really useful. Uh, I hope that what I've shown you was fairly well explained. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I always think I'm explaining it really well in my head. But of course, I do this stuff each and every day. If you're interested, there are plenty more tips and tricks across on masteringportraitphotography.com, which is a website dedicated purely and simply to portrait photography. Until next time, whatever else, be kind to yourself. Take care.